Learning goals and success criteria are critical pieces of information students need to be successful learners. Students and teachers must hold a common understanding of what is to be learned and what successful achievement looks like. With explicit goals and criteria, students have the beginnings of what they need to become independent, self-monitoring learners. Effective classroom assessment is essential to learning. Assessment provides students and teachers the information they need to make decisions to advance learning. And so now we'll move on to, uh, to co-constructing criteria. When assessment is an interactive, collaborative process, it also helps students to develop independence in learning by teaching them how to learn. Hattie and Timperley identify three questions that guide learning. Where am I going? How am I going? And where to next? These questions also focus students' thinking on learning how to learn by drawing their attention to specific steps in the learning process. Learning goals describe, in student-friendly language, what students are to know and be able to do by the end of a period of learning. Success criteria describe, in specific terms, what successful attainment of the learning goal looks like. By identifying the learning goals and what success looks like, teachers answer the first question, where am I going? And lay the foundation for students to be able to determine how they are doing and what they should be doing next. In this video, you will see students and teachers identifying and sharing learning goals. Let's take a look at the learning goal together. As you know, our learning goal is what we need to be able to learn by the end of the lesson. The learning goal was investigate and explain how a fraction, decimal, and percent are related. You have your learning goal sheets in front of you. So if someone could just restate the learning goal for me. Chris? Select the evidence that supports my point of view. Developing success criteria. You've read over the lab now, and so what I'd like you to identify is uh, assessment criteria that you think would be relevant to this lab. So we're, we're going to brainstorm as a class now, and I'd like you to come up with as many criteria as you possibly could. Working together to develop a common understanding of these goals and criteria. So you've had a chance to think about the criteria that are on the board. You've had a chance to share with the person beside you. Okay, and now we're going to look at building our final list that we can use as a checklist. Once goals and criteria are established, students and teachers use them as a basis for providing descriptive feedback. Now your second paragraph here really makes some excellent connections. So you're talking about the reasons that you chose the longhouse to draw, and you're talking about your ancestors, and you also related it to the PowerPoint presentation that you did in class a couple weeks ago. So that's fantastic. I think you've made some great connections. Did you want to tell me about any of those connections that you made? In my connections, why I related it to my ancestors, because in our PowerPoint, Mine was on the Northeast Woodlands Iroquois tribe, and the Northeast Woodlands is where we live now, so that really could have been where our ancestors first like, lived and had any history to do with the First Nations people. That's excellent. So your first par two paragraphs are fantastic. Now looking at your third paragraph, I'm going to agree with Danielle. Um, I don't think it's quite on topic. You're supposed to be writing, if we look back over here at the how, describing the steps that you took to create this piece. So I think you got a little off topic in that third paragraph and you're still doing some relating it to yourself. So if you want to include that part, like Danielle said, in the second paragraph and then rewrite your third paragraph stating the steps that you took to actually draw that particular piece. Okay, so I'll write that down for you in a second, Emily. And um, can you share with me the feedback that you gave to Danielle? Developing students' peer and self-assessment skills. Jeremy, one thing you did well was, using, was use correct punctuation. One other thing you did well was defining examples of physical and chemical changes. Um, something you can work on is using tools to confirm your spelling. 
Okay, in, in terms of the learning goal, I need you to indicate to me um, where you are right now and where you need to go next. All right, Cameron, what about yourself? How do you feel in terms of the learning goal so far? Um, I organized the evidence into groups and separated the different points of view regarding the argument. And you feel you have enough information on both sides that you've got what you need to move forward? Yep. Setting individual learning goals. Your job today, grade six, is to use all of the feedback that you've been given to create a learning goal for yourself, keeping in mind the criteria we just talked about. Okay. I'm going to give you a few minutes to do that now. When teachers use classroom assessment for learning, both students and teachers notice positive results. It's been actually wonderful for the students, you know, setting um, learning goals and success criteria for them has made things much easier for them and I'm seeing positive results in, in better work samples. There's no guesswork, they know exactly what they have to do and they're the ones with a little bit of guidance of course that are coming up with the success criteria so they know what they have to do exactly because they're the ones that told me what it was that they needed to do in order to be um, effective for example writers, readers, whatever the task may be. I think it's good to go through it like as not as a rubric but at the goals because we all go through it verbally so it kind of like we go through it in steps so it kind of like reminds us and like we understand like what we're exactly doing and what's expected and if we ever need to like obviously go back to the rubric just to kind of like see a visual but we also have it in our minds because we've all gone through it as a class so make sure like everybody understands exactly what's expected so I think that's like a really good way of looking at it. A viewer's guide has been developed to enhance your professional learning while viewing this video. The learning goals and success criteria inventory in this viewer's guide is intended to help assess your current practice, guide your professional learning, and measure your growth over time as you continue to use this resource.